Alright guys, so in this video we're checking out the new FlySky FS-X14S receiver and this is one that, um, at least those of you guys that are still watching my channel that fly FlySky I haven't done a FlySky receiver video a review in a long time actually there's not a whole lot of these come out often but when this popped up on uh, Banggood's product page um, I think uh, a lot of you asked me to uh, try and obtain this and do a quick review so this is what this is all about now. Um, we'll go over the specs of this real quick here. So this is a genuine FlySky receiver, and it's made by FlySky, not some other third-party company. Um, the power input is kind of interesting. It's three and a half to eight point four volts. Pretty wide. Normally, uh, the receivers are around five volts, maybe like four and a half to five and a half volts. So this is a pretty wide voltage range. This has an input pad four ppm, which is normal. For a lot of these FlySky receivers, but this one's kind of unusual. It has not IBUS but SBUS as the signal input, and you'll find that depending on what radio you use, that the center is going to be a little bit off. So you'll need to use um, this command in the CLI to adjust the center and the endpoints. Not a big deal. I've done that on other types of receivers, but it isn't a centered at 1500 for this particular receiver on SBUS. So while it is using SBUS, the protocol is obviously still going to be AFHDS2A, which is the standard protocol for uh, most uh, recent modern FlySky radios. And the weight is about 2 grams, and the dimensions are 21 by 12 by 3.1 millimeters. Now this is a diversity receiver, as you can see it's got two antennas, so it does seem to help with range and I did do a little bit of a range test you'll see at the end um, on the craft I'm uh, testing it on the GPS doesn't seem to be working that great so I didn't fly too far about 300 meters I think at the most so and didn't have any issues and this receiver you'll see shows RSSI and the OSD but when you get this um, from the factory it does not have RSSI output on a aux channel I actually flashed firmware to this receiver. You actually use these pads here along with uh, use this uh, programmer here and you just uh, solder that onto there. Um, I found a website that explains how to do this for a lot of different FlySky receivers. Uh, I'll link that in the description. You guys can check it out if you want but if you want to see a video tutorial on how to do that for this and other FlySky receivers let me know down in the comments. Um, I'm not sure how much interest there is in that because I know that the amount of people that actually fly these receivers and radios is pretty small compared to FreeSky, so I'm not sure uh, if there's going to be actually that much interest out there. And a couple of last things to note, um, obviously two antennas. The antenna length on this is about 100 millimeters and the active element length here, uh, just kind of hard to see in camera, it actually is, ends right there even though this little uh, heat shrink was beyond that. That's about 25 millimeters if you guys are wondering. And just for size comparison, here is a, another FlySky receiver, the FSA8S. A pretty popular receiver has been around a long time. This is just a single antenna receiver and it's fairly similar in size. It's about the same size as like an XM Plus receiver, but on this, uh, the X14S doesn't have a plug like the uh, A8S. It has a plug here, so it does have actually have a little bit of thinner profile without that plug, which is I think better to have these soldering pads. Anyway, so I haven't done like super extensive testing on this particular receiver, but it does seem pretty solid. I haven't had any lockups or weird things happen to it, at least in the amount of time I've flown with it. Um, and because it is diversity, unlike a lot of other FlySky receivers that are bigger, uh, there are other ones that have two antennas that are much much larger than this one. Um, I think this one might be the smallest and best one out there, for, for especially for things like uh, toothpicks or whoops, for example. Then if you're looking for a better range on FlySky, this receiver may be the one to go to. So, um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions, if you want to see other types of tests. Um, I'm not really sure how much interest there is out there, so didn't want, want to spend too much time on this if there wasn't really going to be a whole lot of people uh, uh, actually looking into this particular receiver. But, yeah, if you... Uh, are interested in more testing if you're really interested in this receiver you know, leave and also another video on how to do the firmware flashing to get RSSI on an aux channel 
and do let me know down in the comments. I do read that, and that feedback is important. So hopefully, uh, you'll be more interested in making more videos on this one. If not, that's fine too. I can uh, spend my time making videos on other things. Anyway, here's some uh, flight footage, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.